Hi everyone. Today we discuss recursion and dynamic programming. A recursion problem can be divided into sub-problems. And there are several approaches, including bottom-up approach, top-down approach, and half and half approach. The bottom-up approach is the most intuitive. We start with a simple case, and we go further, building up based on the previous case. An example is that we start with a list of one element. And then we figure out how to solve the problem for two elements, and three elements, and so on. The top-down approach is the most complex approach. We divide the problem for case n into sub-problems. And here we should be careful of overlapping between cases. The half and half approach divides the data set in half. A typical example is the binary search. Given a value, we search for the element in a sort array. We figure out which half contain the value and recursively search for the value in that half. And do that again until we can either find the element or we return a not found uh, value. Comparing recursive and iterative solutions. A recursive solution is not space efficient. This is because each function call needs the space or memory for itself in the call stack. The iterative approach is more efficient in terms of space, but also more complex. Dynamic programming is a general technique for solving automation research and counting problems that can be decomposed into sub-problems. It solves the problem by combining the solutions of multiple smaller problems. The difference from recursive approach is that with dynamic programming, the same sub-problem may reoccur. And we can make dynamic programming efficient by caching by caching the results of immediate computations let's look at the uh, example we generate fibonacci numbers so looking at the series we start with 0 and 1 the number after one is the sum of zero and one, which is also one. And the number up to one is the sum of one and one, which is two. And the number up to two is the sum of 1 and 2, which is 3, and so on. And that's the way that we generate the numbers. So the function call with the parameter, let's say phi f, phi calls to f4 and f3. f4 again in its turn calls to F3 and F2. So we can see here F3 is called multiple times. And this is not very efficient. And the time complexity is roughly 
O of 2 to the N. And the space complexity is O N. Let's look at the code example here. And this is following top down approach. The function takes n and cash. Cash here is a dictionary. And it is automatically initialized with an empty dictionary if nothing is passed to the function. So if n is equal to or less than 1, then return n itself. So basically, if the function is called with 0 or 1, then it returns 0 or 1 itself. And other than that, it would return um, the function with uh, the parameter n minus 1 plus the function with the parameter n minus 2. So if you call it with f, Phi, then f5 in its turn would call to f4 and f3 which was illustrated in the previous slide so with dynamic programming we cache the intermediate result, making it more efficient in terms of time complexity. So if we add uh, this line in, this line store the, uh, in, uh, the, the inter intermediate result into the dictionary namely cache. And this help reduce the time complexity to ON, the order of N. The bottom-up approach improves uh, the algorithm a little bit and it reduces the space complexity to the order of one. And instead of uh, recursion, here we, we use uh, an iterative approach. Starting with f minus two as zero and f minus one as one. Iteratively compute f, f which is equal to f minus 2 plus f uh, minus 1. And replace f minus 2 by f minus 1. And f minus 1 by f, then um, we do need additional memory. So that help reduce the memory or space to the order of one.